Welcome. Yeah, so problem five of the 2019 AP Calculus BC FRQ. And before I begin, may the Lord Christ bless me, bless you, and bless this video. But also, may the Lord Christ crush anyone who thinks that they rule the world. Long live Iran. Um, okay, all right. Um, with that said, in part A, uh, we're told that K is bigger than zero. And uh, the slope of the tangent line to f at x equals zero is six. And so we have to figure out what k is. <laughs> um, all right, so you see that I've recorded this video at least once. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so this is pretty straightforward, right? Like we have to figure out what f prime is and then we have to uh, plug in zero into it and set it equal to six. And hopefully that allows us to figure out what k is. Now, uh, to find f prime conveniently, let's write f of x as um, x squared uh, minus two x uh, plus k to the power uh, negative one, right? And then that way we don't have to do quotient rule, we could do power rule and chain rule. So f prime of x then equals negative one times x squared minus two x uh, plus k to the power negative two. That's the power rule part. And now chain rule, so we multiply by the derivative of this guy, right? And that's um, two x minus two, right? Okay, cool. And next, we multiply this negative one to this here. And so that way, like, you know, like, yeah, um, clean it up. And so that's gonna be, when we multiply negative one to this, it's gonna be uh, two minus two x. And uh, our denominator is going to be um, x squared minus two x plus k to the power positive two. And that's just exponent rules, right? That negative two we can write as a denominator with a power positive two. Okay, so we plug in zero to figure out what f prime of zero is and set it equal to six. f prime of zero is going to be two in the numerator because uh, that's zero. And then divided by, and then in here, you get k squared. This here is equal to, we're told, it's equal to six, yeah? Okay, so this is just transition. And now we write six is six over one, and we can flip both. I like doing that as opposed to cross multiplying, so we get uh, k squared over two is equal to one over six, right? Okay, and now we need uh, space, so um, let's uh, make uh, room, right? Okay, so, uh, yeah, eh, it's dirtied up. <laughs> okay, so uh, multiplying both sides of this by two, we get the k squared is equal to um, two over six or a third, right? From which we gather that um, k has to be equal to plus or minus the square root of a third, which is um, plus or minus root three over three. But since we're told that k is greater than zero, we pick positive root three over three. So k equals positive root three over three. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, that's it for A. And now uh, let's do, Jesus Christ, don't smear. Okay, uh, now let's do, um, B. And B is saying that like we know k is negative 8 and then we're asked to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, 1 over x squared uh, minus 2x and so knowing k is uh, negative 8 like that right and then dx yeah okay cool this is just a simple partial fraction decomposition question right so uh, we go um, a divided by um, x plus 2 plus plus my space plus b divided by x minus 4 is equal to 1 divided by x squared uh, minus 2x minus 8. This shouldn't be your first lesson on partial fraction decomposition if you made it all the way to the uh, AP exam, right? So I'm only going to show you so many details, but yeah, like this times this makes that and that's uh, how we start partial fraction decomposition. And next, we want to compare the left side um, to the right side easily. So ask to find A and B. And so the way we do that is give them common denominator. So that means that we multiply here by x minus 4 and also here by x minus 4, right? And over here, we multiply by x plus 2 here and also by x plus 2 there, right? Now, this denominator is the same as this denominator, same as this denominator. So we conclude that the numerator to the left of the equal sign has to equal the numerator to the right of the equal sign. And that has to be true for all x's. So a times x minus 4 plus b times x plus 2 has to equal 1 
for all axes and therefore if we strategically uh, pick axes which is like say x is equal to four then that makes this zero this becomes six b is equal to one so six b is equal to one meaning b is equal to one over six so b is equal to one over six okay um and then i'm like maybe a little too jesusy for most people's taste but like the number six appears like and books and um, test way too frequently. It's probably because like the people who write it are like uh, demon possessed or something. No, really, like check it out. Like, um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled. You'll see it. <laughs> okay, and then net, next, let x equal. What's the other strategic choice of x? It's negative two, right? So it's going to be uh, negative six a. I swear I'm not lying. Um, equals one. So a is equal to negative a, a sixth. So a is equal to negative one over six. Yeah, okay. Even when they have choices of other numbers that like in the problem would work like just as well, like they pick six, I don't know why. Okay, um, definitely got me curious. Um, okay, so get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of the underline, but also get back to our original claim, which is that this plus this here is equal to this and you know we found common denominators so asked to find a and b and now we found them so we go all right that this here is negative a sixth and this here is um positive a sixth right okay my my chalk broke doesn't feel as good to write with a broken chalk but it's okay so dx so doing the integral from zero to one of this is the same as doing the integral from zero to one of this which is like the task at hand right okay so uh one thing that makes things nicer is like if we factor out six then write it in front of the integral so uh we could do this and also like i want the negative to like uh, come after the positive i don't want to lead with the negative yeah that's never good it's like waking up on the wrong side of bed no okay 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 um so then we see that it's a six times if i do this antiderivative first it's the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 4, right? And then minus, um, and this here, and the minus is from that, right? Uh, this here is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2, right? Okay. And we need to evaluate from 0 to 1, right? Okay, cool. And I need space, and I don't need this. So there that goes. Okay. So if I plug in one, what do I get? I get a sixth times the natural log of, uh, what is that? When I plug in one, I get three. So the natural log of three, and then minus, when I plug in one, this two is the natural log of three. Ah, how convenient. And the sixth is multiplying everything I'm gonna write um, after it, right? And so this here is zero. So like, in the interest of space, let's put zero there, and then uh, minus plugging in uh, zero, right? And so this is the evaluation theorem you should know. So when I plug in zero in this part, I get the natural log of four. So the natural log of four, and I'm careful. So that minus has to distribute to uh, whatever I write after it. And so next I plug in zero into here. So that's minus the natural log of, um, I plug in zero, I get the natural log of two, right? Okay. And, um, one more parenthesis. Yeah, right, okay, okay. And uh, so what I wanna do here is I wanna view this as a sixth times the natural log of two minus the natural log of four. All right, and that's perfectly fine. I just distributed this minus sign to here and there. Okay, and now I use what's called the log quotient rule and I have videos on logarithms. I love them, it's like one of my favorite things. Uh, and so watch them and I even prove the quotient rule. It's a nice uh, little, Proof? But yeah, it's the natural log of two over four, right? Like that. So that's the natural log of a half uh, times a sixth, of course. A sixth, the natural log of a half. And now if we want, we can use the power rule for logs and put this one sixth right here, which amounts to writing the natural log of the sixth root of a half, but I'll leave it like this. So the natural log of a half to the power sixth. Right? Okay, cool. Um, so that's that. And then 
uh, C. All that we have is uh, K is equal to 1 and we're doing the integral from 0 to 2 this time as opposed to 0 to 1. So when K is equal to 1, F turns into 1 over X squared uh, minus 2X and then plus 1, right? Notice that this here is a perfect square quadratic and it is in particular X minus 1 all squared, right? Okay, and uh, we go from 0 to 2, but this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So here's what we've got, right? Like, um, if this is um, x equals 1, then um, this function 1 over x minus 1 all squared looks like this, right? Yeah, okay. And so what we have to do is break this into two integrals. One going from uh, zero to say a and um, having lim as a goes to one from the left, right? So this here, and we write the <laughs> minus to mean one from the left to the right of one on top, right? Right, okay, 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 okay. You get it, you get it, you get it. So this here is for this area right and so I have 1 over um, x minus 1 squared dx and then plus uh, you guessed it and so this time we're gonna go from a to 2 right but lim as a goes to 1 this time from the right right and so this is for this area here and um, otherwise 1 over um, x um, minus 1 all squared dx and in order for this integral to converge uh, both this integral and this integral need to converge so naturally let's start with this okay so this is just simple u sub uh, but i suppose i'll show it to you so u equals x minus 1 du is equal to um, dx so what we have here is 1 over u squared du and that's u to the negative 2 du and the antiderivative of that is u to the negative 1 divided by uh, negative 1 so that's negative 1 over u but I don't want to go to u our limits are about x so negative 1 over u is negative 1 over x minus 1 and so I'm just working on this integral first so evaluate from 0 to 1 and uh, not sorry 0 to 0 to a and we have uh, lim as a goes to uh, 1 from uh, the left of this, right? So, 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 first, uh, lim is A goes to 1 from the left of negative 1 over A minus 1 when we plug in um, A, right? And then minus, when we plug in 0, we get negative 1 over negative 1, so that's positive 1. So this is what we've got. Now, and this part, what happens is uh, a goes to 1 from the left. Well, a going to 1 from the left means that we pick values of a that are arbitrarily close to 1, but to the left of 1. So like 0 0.999 and then next 0 0.999999 and so on. So if we do that, we get negative 1 divided by 0 0.9999 say minus 1 is negative 1 over negative 0 0.0001 and the negatives cancel so we get 1 over 0 0.0001 and so you get it this goes to infinity all right and so what we're subtracting one this here goes to infinity and therefore this diverges and remember we said that we want both this and this to converge in order for that to converge and therefore it diverges and they left us a little hint um yeah i don't particularly enjoy making ap calculus solutions i'd rather like make videos on inverse laplace transforms which i've started on already recently so um i don't know if i'll make say problem one because it's like really long and a lot of reading but i'll make more of them keep watching take care